Good morning to all of you who are here and all of you who are worshiping online. Uh, and happy Cinco de Mayo. Please, okay now? Yes. Better? Okay, great. Okay. Please fill out any prayer cards and put them uh, along with, uh, uh, fill out any prayer cards which will be collected during the offertory. The rose on the altar is in celebration of the birth of Emily Asteria Mack, born on May 1st. Emily is the daughter of Megan Lahuta Mack and the first grandchild of Wilda and Mike Lahuka. Are there any other, are there any birthdays or anniversaries? First, Debbie? Anniversary and his mom's birthday. Okay. I don't know how many of you knew this, but uh, the Titanic had 10,000 jars of mayonnaise aboard. And when, it's, when it hit the iceberg, what happened? It was uh, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, which is which is today, and our grand, we have a grandson that's 37 today. Okay, for those of you online, we just heard a very bad joke, <laughs> and a 37-year-old grandson. Any other announcements and any birthdays? Oh, okay, I said announcements, so so let's do the announcements. Oh. Geez. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Now, backwards in order, may we have any announcements? <laughs> yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. It wouldn't be me if I didn't say something about the pumpkin patch. The pumpkins are coming on September 28th, which is the last Saturday in September. We hope you can all come and help get those pumpkins. But now I'm here today for a different. The missions committee is going to be collecting diapers for the month of May. It's um, diapers, wipes, or cash donations. There are a lot of people that can't afford to get diapers. Diapers aren't covered by any of the uh, organizations. And um, we generously hope that you'll be just as generous in this month and bring in some diapers. The diaper box will be downstairs in Fellowship Hall, and we're collecting for the whole, mark, uh, whole month of May. Um, Bear Necessities is the local group that will get all the diapers, and they take care of distributing them. Thank you. Diapers are especially necessary as they cloth diapers, uh, uh, paper diapers do not exist when I had children. But now, and, and women did not normally go out to work when I was young, but now women have to go out to work. And what do they do with their children? They put them in daycare, but daycare won't take them unless they're paper diapers. And that's why there's an urgency for this. Good morning. Good morning. Next Saturday, um, in honor of Mother's Day, uh, Family Fun is hosting a uh, woman's tea. Um, so we're gonna, it's at 3 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. Um, bring your, your daughter, your sister, your 
for your friend. We're going to have a nice tea from 3 to 4.30. If everybody can bring a finger food to share, um, that would be great. It's going to be a very nice time. If um, My partner, Laura, will be out of town, so I can use a little extra help. If you'd like to help me with setup or anything like that, um, just see me down after church. Okay, thank you. I hope you all can make it Saturday. Okay, thank you. Any other announcements? Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. Maybe you noticed in the messenger that there is a new family from Afghanistan here in town. Um, I put in a note to ask for some donations. They're part of the U.S. Diversity Visa Program, and their name was drawn by lottery. So they are so thrilled to be here. It's a mom, a dad, and an eight-month-old baby. So North Guilford Congregational Church has already pitched in, and the Holy Advent Church has helped them. And so the few things that they need, Clever Crafters made a sewing kit for her. Um, the baby wears size 24 months, if you'd like to help with clothes for him. Dad is doing landscaping and garden care, so he needs uh, t-shirts. Or maybe if you'd like to donate a gift card from uh, either Ocean State Job Lot or TJ Maxx or Kohl's or one of those, or grocery cards. But they are getting settled in and so happy to be here. They're so grateful. Also, if you have uh, an infant car seat that faces the rear, uh, perhaps you could help with driving. So far, I am the driver. <laughs> and also, I wanted to mention a gardening group. On Tuesday, we're going to meet and do some gardening around the church, mostly weeding. So if you have 20 minutes or two hours, 9 o'clock Tuesday morning with a weeding tool, and we would so appreciate your help. Thank you. Okay. Any, other announce any other announcements? Okay. The peace of Christ be with you. Please stay in your pew and pass the peace of Christ to those immediately around you. Hear these words to ponder. The first question which the priest and the Levite asked was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But the Good Samaritan reversed the question, if I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? Attributed to Martin Luther King.
please stand for this call to worship of Psalm 98, response 1, found on page 818 of the hymnal. Sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have gotten the victory. The Lord Lord has declared declared victory victory and has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. The Lord has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Bring forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the ruler, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who dwell in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Please remain standing if you are able and sing hymn number in Christ There Is No East Nor West, hymn number 548. Please be seated. Let us say together the prayer of confession. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, 
but we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped up in our own concerns. We have gone along with evil, with pride, quarreling, and divisiveness. Holy God, help us to face up to ourselves so that as you move forward in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Each and in our own words, each in our own way, let us bow our heads and let us pray. Hear these words of assurance. There is a profound love between the Father, the Son, our neighbors, and us. Christ invites us all to abide in his love, just as he abides in the Father's love. By keeping his commandment to love one another, we each and all experience complete joy in the here and now. In that joy, we can repent, seek, and receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with us in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first scripture reading is from John, for, from 1 John uh, 5 through 1 through 5, found on page 227 of the New Testament. The heading is Faith Conquers the World. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Here ends the reading. set free, God will lift my voice today, lift up your voice, lift up your voice higher, higher every day, higher every day, higher, rejoicing every and I'm singing, you're singing, we're singing, sing unto the Lord. I know that something 
deep inside that wants to be set free. Good morning, children of God. How's everybody doing today? Sunny or cloudy? What is it out there today? Rainy. Okay. So how are we doing this rainy day? Good. Okay. Don't we just love spring with all the flowers, green grass, and the sunshine? And speaking of love, what is the song that we just heard? What's the song we just heard? Jesus loves me. This I know. Is that the song? <laughs> Love for the Bible tells me so. We just heard it, guys. Yeah, can you tell it? <laughs> Little ones going in and blown. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Okay. Not going to talk today. All right. Well, you know, today's Bible verses talk a whole lot about love. In fact, love is mentioned 13 times in our scripture readings today. Love must be important to the message for the day. So what kind of day are you having this morning? Are you happy? Are you happy? How about you? Are you happy? Happy? Oh. Or are you sad? No. Oh. Sad? No. Left side now? Which way is it? Okay. Is anybody sad today? You're sad? Just a tiny bit. Can we make we you are. happy? We are. Oh, sure. You've got a smile we on your face. Oh. All right. So what makes you happy? What makes you happy? Your family. Okay. Family. Friends. Family. Friends. So when something good happens, we're happy, right? When something bad happens, we're sad. Do you think Jesus wants us to be happy? Yes. Jesus tells us, God, my Father, loves me, so I love you. 
I love you so you'll be filled with joy. He wants us not to be just happy, but filled with his joy. to fill us with joy. So here's a happy face, right? Filled with joy. All right? A little different than the other one. All right, let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. He is the greatest friend we could ever have. Help us to always remember you in our life. And share your love with those around me. Thank you, Lord, for all your love. Thank you, Lord, for all your love. We love you, God. We, love you, we will tell someone we love, we, we love them today. And we'll give them a hug. We'll give them a hug. Amen. Amen. Remember, you've got to give somebody a hug today. Okay? And we have in Jesus. Our second scripture reading today is from John 15, verses 9 through 17, page 103 in the New Testament. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man, no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. 
You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Joe was a drunk who was miraculously converted at a Bowery mission. Prior to his conversion, he had gained the reputation of being a dirty wino for whom there was no hope, only a miserable existence in the ghetto. But following his conversion to a new life in Christ, everything changed. Joe became the most caring person that anyone associated with the mission had ever known. Joe spent his days and nights hanging out at the mission, doing whatever needed to be done. There was never anything that he was asked to do that he considered beneath him. Whether it was cleaning up the vomit left by some violently sick alcoholic, or scrubbing toilets after a careless man left the men's room filthy. Joe did what was asked with a smile on his face and seeming gratitude for the chance to help. He could be counted on to feed feeble men who wandered off the street and into the mission and to undress and tuck into bed men who were too out of it to take care of themselves. One evening when the director of the mission was delivering the evening evangelistic message to the usual crowd of still and sullen men with drooped heads. There was one man who looked up, came down the aisle to the altar, and knelt to pray, crying out to God to help him change. The repentant drunk kept shouting, Oh God, make me like Joe. Make me like Joe. Make me like Joe. The director of the mission leaned over and said to the man, Son, I think it would be better if you prayed, Make me like Jesus. The man looked up to the director with a quizzical expression. He said, Is he like Joe? The author of this episode is unknown, but I suspect he knew Joe, and he knows Jesus in a very personal way. Joe didn't preach sermons. He lived them. Then we have Jim Harris from Virginia writing in the Upper Room Devotional. As I serve in the food pantry, I know that I'm quietly preaching a sermon on the love of God. Owen Peeler was our pastor in North Carolina. Unbeknownst to the congregation, Owen paid daily visits to a local AIDS patient, patient who was home alone and dying. When we introduced Owen to the Cairo's prison ministry, he became an immediate hit with the inmates, Christian and non-Christian alike. His quiet, unassuming demeanor was a safe harbor for inmates, seeking genuine compassion from somebody accepting of their spiritual condition. He listened, 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 Loved, loved, loved. Pastor Owen practiced Matthew 25, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say to you, inasmuch as you've done it to one of the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me. So what do these three ministries have in common? Joe, Jim, and Owen each are at the face of Christ. They not only love their neighbor, they serve them joyfully out of that love. They are following John 13, verse 34. Listen and hear some of Jesus' last words in the upper room. A new command I give you. Love one another. 
as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another as I have loved you. Now, love is a central theme throughout the Old Testament. Love that emphasized compassion, kindness, and faithfulness. For example, we find in Leviticus 19, verse 18, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Micah 6, verse 8. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to practice to justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God? Jeremiah 31, verse 3. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness in you. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. You shall love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. So how is it that Jesus proclaims that this is a new command? He plainly says, a new command I give you, love one another. Jesus was speaking from his earthly status, not from on high. This was not a you shall command, it was, or he, he has told you, or some distant celestial past personage speaking from afar. No, Jesus was up front and close to the people in the room that he was addressing. So close that he had washed their unwilling feet before they broke bread and drank wine. This was a new command in the sense as to how it should be executed. There's a tiny word tucked into the good news. As. A-S. As. This simple word, as, gives Jesus ownership of the command he is giving. <clears throat> Jesus is telling us that he wants us to love one another in the way that he loved others. When the disciples tried to shoo people away from Jesus, what did he do? Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. He took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. How can we not smile when the children gather for children's time each Sunday? Their responses are pure enthusiasm and joy. Love as I have loved. In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Jesus reached out and touched the leper. Love as I have loved. Are we willing to reach out and touch the leper, the outcast, hug the prisoner, love as I have loved? Jew and Samaritans hated each other over religious dogma. Their hate was so deep that they would travel miles out of the way to avoid contact with each other. It seems that Jesus orchestrated the trek through Samaria in doing so, he meets a Samaritan woman, looks beyond her dubious scruples, and lovingly witnesses to her about the living water he has to offer. <clears throat> to Jesus, the Samaritans were not the enemy, the others. <clears throat> no, they were entitled to the same Jesus, love as any Jew or Gentile. Love as I have loved. Now, we can focus on our own relationship to God where our religion has no relationship to the people around us. It's just all about us and the Lord. Jesus says, no, 
It's about us, others, and the Lord. To love as Jesus loved, we have to also love others. And not just the easy ones to love. Most of the Jesus love stories are with people held in low esteem, people on the margin of society, children, women, tax collectors, lepers, Samaritans, prisoners, beggars, prostitutes, the stranger, the lame, the poor, and the powerless. And of course, today's scripture, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The good shepherd also willingly lays down his life for the sheep. Willingly and giving up one's life is a supreme sacrifice. This means that anything we sacrifice short of giving up our life is reasonable. Our treasure, our time, our privacy, our attitude, our wants, our temptations, our privilege, our ambition, our isms, our ego, and more can be laid down in love. The New Testament is replete with examples of love as Jesus loves. Love that has a human touch that we can experience with each other and Jesus. The Apostle John, as witness to Jesus on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane, documents this. Listen and hear again what Jesus tells us in today's good news. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and reign in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. If we obey Jesus and love others, his love remains in us. We receive joy from his love, a love that mirrors the love between God and Jesus. A sacrificial, selfless love that extends to everyone regardless of their spiritual condition. It is in fact unconditional, free of charge. <clears throat> this joyful love is not selective. It is not restricted to certain individuals or groups thereof. Our personal preferences, our shared interests, our unities with others are unimportant. In fact, these traits may well stand between us and the joy and the love of God. We have to reach out and love everyone even those who not do, do not belong to our tribe. Conversely, we are not to ignore, turn our backs to those who do not belong to our tribe. Sometimes this is very difficult to do. A person may be so worldly, we simply cannot get past their persona. But listen to what Romans 15, verse 7 tells us. Accept each other just as Christ has accepted you, that God will be given glory. How did Christ accept us? He accepted us when we were <clears throat> sinners. Should we do any less? We are not accepting the person's sin when we love another as Christ loves us. Christ will work on the sin part in both of us. When a Kairos prison ministry team goes into a prison for a weekend to witness and teach basic Christianity, there is never any discussion nor question about why the inmates are incarcerated. None of the team's business. The team is there to be the face of Christ to everyone in the prison. The weekend theme of I overcame, so can you, brings the joy of belonging, community, and hope to those who attend the weekends. It is amazing how many of the security and administrative Folks, as well as the inmates, pay close attention to the program, <coughs> the face of Christ. For many of these people, this may be the only spiritual dialogue they encounter in their dailiness. I found in Kairos that when you reach out to others you normally would not engage with, that there is a profound transformation in the relationship you have with others on the outside and with God. I can tell you that when I've walked out of several Kairos weekends late on a Sunday, I was feeling joyful and closer to God and his glory. It 
is an incredible feeling. You can't wait to begin training for the next weekend. Amen. Scientific studies of the Kairos program have proved its worth to the inmates, the Correctional Institute, and yes, even us taxpayers. On the average, 50% of the released inmates return to prison within five years. Kairos graduates' recidivism drops to 15%. It costs Connecticut taxpayers over $90,000 a year to maintain an inmate. You can do the math. Tongue in cheek, that should be a joy to taxpayers. Now just a note, the DOC, the Department of Corrections, has suspended the Kairos program for two years as they revamped the volunteer program. The action came about so quickly that the weekend that Pastor Martha recently trained for was canceled just days before she was going into York Correctional, the women's prison. Sad. There was some hint that other prison volunteer groups had voiced concern about the amount of Christian time that Kairos had in the Connecticut prisons. So sad. We would appreciate any prayers for resuming Kairos in the Connecticut prisons, but I digress. Today's good news tells us that Jesus chooses and appoints each of us to go and bear fruit in his name. This is my command, love each other. We are not Jesus, but he is not in us and wants others to see him in us. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you've done unto me, one of the least of these brethren, you have done unto me, just like Joe. Amen. Amen. Excuse my running nose here. Okay, in taste of the offering. Every day we find new ways to be loved by him and others, and then he calls us to minister others in his name. We respond to this wonderful call through our giving this day. Let us bring our gifts to God and offer them in gratitude and praise.
occasion. Our joy. We offer our gifts to stay as we reflect on the wisdom of the word. Jesus urges us to hold on to him, to stay connected to his example, presence, and the fulfillment he brings. He reveals that our joy finds its weakness when it is all of it to divine joy. Help us to find him in love, obey his command, love one another. In the acts of service, healing, and selfless generosity. I'd just like to add, uh, Bev's sister is in uh, hospice in Pennsylvania, not doing too well these days. So, Lord, as we gather in worship this morning, we bring to you joy, the Lord, our joys and concerns, acknowledging that you do indeed care for our lives. Our hearts overflow with gratitude for the joy that comes through your never-ending love for us. Thank you, Lord. Yet, we lift up those concerns we burden at heart. Lord, hold those facing health issues, financial concerns, and other struggles close to you. Hug them, Lord, as only you can do. We especially remember Patty and the loss of her father. Peace with them. We love you, Lord. Know that our joys and concerns are in your name. Amen. Join us in the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and make us temptation. Christians by our love in the insert.
reflecting God's love with your faith. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the peace and the peace of Christ of all.